Impromptu tunes, impromptu tunes, impromptu tunes, impromptu. Do you hear the people improvising? improvising? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Impromptu Tunes, the completely improvised musical podcast. Please give it up for your MC. Hello everyone, welcome to Impromptu Tunes, the podcast. I am Holly James and I am in the studio today with Alexia Brinsley. Hi. Oh, hi. Alexia. Alexia, what did you have for lunch today? Ooh, that's like a trick question. I can never remember. Um, no, I can't. I had a chicken sandwich. It was awesome. Delicious. Yeah. Um, speaking of delicious, we've also got Emmett Nichols in the studio. Stop it. That's <laughs> I <won't>. harassment. Stop. <laughs> and it's been recorded. Haha, <laughs> I'm wearing a wire. Just kidding. Uh, what did you have for lunch today? Emmett? I had pasta. See, I'm in the habit of uh, freezing up a bunch of pastas. And I have other really exciting facts about my life too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and on the music we have the absolutely incredible David Peak. <laughs> Classic With his customary high. <laughs> and I also want to give a shout out to our tech Morgan and Josie, who's also helping out in the studio today. Now, we are going to make up a musical for you today. You whoa, can... whoa, whoa. I think everyone who's listening to this podcast is wondering one thing. What? What did, did you, you have, have for, for lunch? lunch? <laughs> Um, well, don't dish it out if you can't take it, Holly. <laughs> Do you know I had the most boring lunch today? I had a bread roll with butter on it <gasps> and a muesli bar. Wow. Oh. In the roll? No. And then I found some, like a scroungy bit of honey at work and I put that on the <laughs> roll. <laughs> What's, what is scroungy <laughs> no, honey? Wait, like a scraggy, scraggy. A scrounged a bit of scraggy oh honey. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway. We all had. So that Quite was like hemic indexes today, guys. We did well. Good job. I'm so glad. Like, usually I have really nice lunches. Anyway. Was it like in the staff work room or <laughs> yeah. you just found it in the corner? <laughs> Scragged up. It was like a mouse trap for me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you were locked in work for so long. <laughs> this has not gone how I expected. Um, anyway, now that we all know what we've all had for lunch, I, we are going to record a musical. Um, we've been getting suggestions off Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So if you've got a suggestion, pop it on there and we'll put it into the bowl of destiny uh, where I will shortly draw out a title. Um, we also want to thank our major sponsor, Drum and PTY Limited. Um, they are our major Patreon and you too can be a Patreon and get Get delicious bonus content, almost as delicious as, as the honey, honey. <laughs> scraggy honey. Um, for you can little... be our scraggy honey, <laughs> listeners. We love you. <laughs> yum yum. The scrunch for you. Oh, oh dear, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Anyway, uh, so I'm just about to grab the bowl. Hold on a second. Bowl has been got, um, and dip my hand into it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to dip it, Holly? <laughs> it's like a honey Full pot. Of honey. <laughs> so today's title, oh, how delicious! Um, it is "Underappreciated Pocket" by Christopher McWhirter Whitlock. Thanks, Christopher. Underappreciated Pocket. We appreciate you, Christopher. We do appreciate you, Christopher. Thanks so much for our title today. Uh, so yeah, we're going to make up a musical for you. Um, guys, are we ready? I'm ready. Ready. Gi'd up. Yes. <laughs> ready. Tim Tom Tilliam, Tim Tom Tilliam, Tim Tom Tilliam, yo. Tim Tom Tilliam, Tim Tom Tilliam, Tim Tom Tilliam, yo. Janice, have you got it? I have got it, I have got it, let me tell you this. I have got it, I have got it, check it out. Yes, you got it, yes, you got it, can't believe you got it. Look at it, I cannot stop it, oh my god, it's grouse. Got it from my pocket, yeah, I got it from my pocket, yeah, I got it from my pocket, and I socked it to him. Got it from the pocket, and I got it from the pocket, and I got it from the pocket, and I socked it to them. Got it from the pocket, and I got it from the pocket, and I got it from the pocket, and I socked it to them. Got it from the pocket, and I got it from the pocket, and I got it from the pocket, and I socked it to them. Oi, check it out, Janice and Rodney. Look what I got my sticky fingers on. What'd you get, Peter? Pulled it out when he wasn't looking. Hey, he is such a slob. Look, I got in had my hand a tiny brand new fob. I was telling it was right next to his crotch. I now have a shiny golden fob, fob watch. 
Got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, and I'm gonna sing. Got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, gonna sock it to them. Got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, gonna sock it to them. Got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, got it from the pocket, gonna sock it to them. Look at me, I got this amazing piece. Only yesterday. Look at me, I got this amazing watch, and I just took it from James. Look at me. I'm the richest man in the world with five shillings stealing from men's pockets is I tell you what it's so thrilling cuz I got it from the pocket yes I got it from the pocket yes I got it from the pocket gonna suck it to them got it from the pocket yes I got it from the pocket yes I got it from the pocket gonna suck double time got it from the pocket yes I got it from the pocket got it from the pocket gonna suck it to them got it from the pocket got it from the pocket got it from the pocket gonna suck it to them got it from the pocket got it from the pocket got it from the pocket gonna suck it to got it from the pocket got it from the pocket got it from the pocket gonna suck it to them well, I tell you what, Edgar. Yeah, uh, yes, um, porcupine, what? Well, I, uh, well, I must say, Edgar, you know me and my prickly temperament. Well, I've got to say, I'm ruffled up today. Oh, porky, porky, what's got you down? No, oh, Edgar, I lost my five shillings today. Five shillings? Yes, and my golden fob watch. Purchased for me and granted to me by my dear old mummikins. May she rest in peace. Oh, R.I.P. mummikins, indeed. Oh, Porky, you sound like you've been very careless. Oh, pick careless? Me? I'm the most defended person there is. I'm always on guard with my thorny, spiky nature. Always on the lookout, but these kids today... Oh, <laughs> I don't know what, Edgar. Oh, Pocky, calm down, old fellow. Uh, uh, You're uh, getting uh, quite red in the uh, face uh, and, and the chops. Oh, <laughs> my red chops. Oh, you know me so well, Edgar. I'm like a roasted barbecue. Now look, Porky, we've been friends for 40 years. 49 years. <laughs> you always round down. I always round up to the nearest nine. <laughs> it's been 45 years exactly. But you're right. I always say 49 and you always say 40. Oh, I'm so glad we got that sorted out. It is a quaint tradition that we have back in preparatory school with Mrs. Thirtleton. Ah... You and I were chums. Weren't we just? And still are to this very day. We are, but even in preparatory school, I remember, porky old chap, you're always losing things, dropping them, leaving them, setting fire to them. Oh, well, yes, it's true I have been rather absent-minded ever since I first lost my pair of scissors and had to replace it with two rulers that I strapped together with a piece of cello tape. A genius, though. And I mean, that's what started your stationary empire. Thank you. And yes, when I stuck all those pens to my back and you called me Porky ever since. <laughs> ah, but it is quite a shame that you've lost your mummy's watch, mummikins. Well, I guess I could earn it through my various sellings of Bic pens and <laughs> P Parker pens and Pentel pens. You see, I'm a, I'm a, a my company masquerades as all three. But uh, that watch, that watch. This is my watch. This was my watch. I lost it just the other day. That was my watch A golden watch Gone away Gone away My best friend Was a watch Not you, Edgar Brutal. My best friend Was a watch And now how the time goes My best friend Was a watch not you, sorry, Edgar. My best friend was a watch. And how time goes. That was my watch. That was my memory of my mama. My mama, 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 mama. That was my watch. Tick tock now, mama.
comes God, God. My best friend, not you, Edgar. I'm sorry, my best friend was my watch. My best friend was my watch. And how time goes by And how time How time goes by Hey, Rodney, is that you? No I'm Janice. What are you talking about? Oh, sorry. That's Rodney. Sorry, Janice. I thought it was you because of all the soot on your face. No. Rodney. Hey. Yes? Oh, wait. <laughs> sorry. I thought I was Rodney. I've got so much soot on my face. Look, just wash it, wash it off. Like, wipe it with your sleeve. Oh, like. oh, great. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. I still can't. you got more soot under the soot. Oh, yeah. It's just... My, actually, I'm not even wearing a sleeve. It's just soot. Do I even know who you are? Well, I'm, I'm Peter. <laughs> I think It's hard to tell oh, I don't even know Sometimes you don't even know who you are anymore We're all covered in soot I don't even know myself anymore I don't even know who I am anymore Covered in dirt I don't even know who I am anymore I don't even know who I am anymore Do I have friends? I don't know who I am anymore Covered in dirt I don't know who I am anymore You know why? It's cause we're so damn poor Oh, who am I? complex because I don't actually have parents. But now I realise it's just that I don't know what my features are because of this sooty appearance. And I don't even know what shape my body is because I've got so many clothes that aren't mine. And no matter how hard I scrub and scrub, I'm still covered in all this grime. Who am I? each other. That's right, yeah. Rodney. Even if we don't know who we are, we've still got each other. We're like brothers and a sister. That's right. And no matter what, we've got each other and all our looty booty that we've stolen from the pockets in town. And that's the most valuable thing to me. Well, I stole someone's passport just the other day. You know what he's probably wondering now? Oh, Bevan Thorpe. He's probably thinking, oh, where's my passport? I just have to ask myself one question. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I don't know. Look at the geezer's face. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I was thinking, with the right kind of leverage, these geezers might pay even more than we pick out of their underappreciated pockets. That's quite the idea, right? Yeah, like Bevan Thorpe. What would he pay to have his identity back? I mean, we know how it feels to be no one, but how does Bevan like it? And what, what about Patricia when I stole her prosthetic leg? Bet she'd want that back. She'd be hopping mad, I tell ya. And what about this glittery diamond necklace? Two E. With love forever from B. Well, they ain't feeling the love now, are they? No, no, no. And what about this old shiny gold fob watch? That's got to be worth at least, I don't know, it's got a message on it too. Read that, Janice. You're the only one of us what can read. It says, To my dearest darlingest, love, mummykins. Oh, that's, that's got to be worth its weight in Gold? Gold? Well, I think something from someone's mother might just be their most precious possession. I reckon we should go give 
And I'll visit to my dearest darling beloved and see what he has to say about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, master is in the drawing room. How may I help you, sooty boys? Oh, I'm a sooty girl, actually, but you can let us right in because we want to speak to dearest, darlingest, beloved. <gasps> That's me. That's what my, my Rose calls me. She calls me some other names as well when we're getting a bit dirty. Would you like to know? She called me her Rumple Stallion. Oh, that's right. disgusting. She says, ride me, Rumple Stallion, ride me. Oh, I feel a bit ill. And you know, stallions don't usually do the riding, but Rumple Stallion does. Right then, oh, look, we've got really important business. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Like when Rose needs to be tended to, she says, get to work. This business isn't going to sort itself. Hey, listen, out of the way, old man. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, look at this place, Rodney. Look at the glittering chandeliers. Look at the floors made of marble kittens. Oh, my God. Look at that light. It's completely made of gold. It's not even light. <laughs> it's just gold. I think it's just a gold ball on the ceiling. Wow. This mate's loaded. Right. No mercy, Rodney. We're going in hard. What's our tactic? Good cop, bad cop. All right. Which one do you want to be? I don't, I don't know. What, what one do you feel more comfortable with? Bad cop. Bad cop? Okay, be good cop. All right, let's go in here. This looks like the drawing room. Who even has a drawing room? I don't know. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? Are you dearest, darlingest, beloved? <gasps> How do you know that name? <laughs> we have something that you've been looking for, right? I think that you may have misplaced something in the last few weeks. Oh, my golden fob. It was you, boy. You disgusting, thieving little boy. No, I'm a girl. Oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe it wasn't you. I'm sorry for falsely accusing you of stealing my fob. Listen, I'm with Janice and this is Rodney. But did you feel steal my fob or what? I mean, what? Well, that depends. What are you going to pay for it? I'd give anything for Mummykin's gift. Anything? Yes, of course, anything. I mean, some things are worth nothing, you know, in that they're worth everything. No, they but we, no don't, price. we don't want anything that's worth nothing. No, well, I'll give you anything that's worth anything. Name your price, please. Will you give us this house? What? The cat? I mean, the kitten stone floor? And the, and the gold light? And the, uh, the, the statue of a minotaur? That yep. you didn't probably notice on your way in because it's out the back. Yeah, I saw it. You saw it through the window. I did. Well, then describe the glass of the windows if you saw it so much. It was tinted. Tinted, yes. Oh, damn it. Yes. Yes, even this house, if that's what you so desire. What do you think, Rodney? Excuse me, we're just going <coughs> to... Yeah, no, just please. Just imagine what kind of a life you could have in this house. Oh, oh Rodney. Imagine he's going to... We could have, like... F f we could have... Four walls We could have a roof too And a floor Kitten floor We could have baths every day Twice a day We could have food in a kitchen And we Frolic in a garden With the statue In the garden Minotaur statue We could have a place to call our we own We could have a place to call your we own We could have a place to call our home We could have a place to call our As 
long as I get my friend back, that's all I ask. Your friend? Yes, my watch was my best friend. Whoa! Your best friend, a watch? It's actually yes. kind of beautiful, really. Well, you must know what it's like to have friends. Yeah, Rodney's my best friend, and we've also got Peter and all the sorty boys and girls. Yeah, there's like eight of us. Wow. Yeah. Where's my watch? All right, well, how about you hand us over the keys to this house and at the same time as we hand over the watch? Yes, fine, here you go. There you go, old man. There's your best friend back. Out on the street with you. You could have a place to call your own. We could have a place to call our home. We could have a place to call our own. Our home. We now have a place to call our own. We now have a place to call our Nowhere to live. Oh, this is my home now, this dustbin. What? What have you... Thanks for walking by and spotting me, Edgar. You have been a good friend all these years. Not as good as old mummykins here. <laughs> Porky old chap. This is ridiculous. I nearly didn't recognise you because of all the soot you seem to have gathered on your face and the trash piles around your Well, you did think I was a lady at first. It's true, I did. I was quite interested in you, actually. I'm a bit disappointed. I thought you were quite inappropriate. <laughs> you should consider the way you interact with ladies on the street. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, all right then. Don't tell me you're masquerading as a... as a... As a gentleman, when really you're from the streets yourself. You've seen right through me. <laughs> well, it was your accent that gave you away, and the inappropriate way you referred to me when you thought I was a woman covered in soot. It's true. It's like reverse my fair lady, where you've <laughs> realised where, where I've come from. Well, that's why you've always appreciated your pockets so much. You've always taken such good care of your things, because you, you came from nothing. I did. I came from places where they pick pockets day and night. And those pockets, the rich, they're underappreciating them. Well, I know. I mean, that's how I lost my form in the five shillings, which I really don't care about anymore. And that's why you always had zips on your pockets. <laughs> You're so clever, so secure. That's, that's how I made my fortune. But <laughs> Mine was some stationery, if you recall. Yeah, I don't recall. But I had it all tied up in the house, and now I can't even print a, print a piece of paper. I've been your best friend for years now. No, you haven't. That was my old mummykins, my old watch. What do you mean you've been my best friend this whole time? Oh my god. Right, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to take back your house by speaking to these scoundrels. Well, you're the only one who would know how to speak the language of the street, Tiffin, you will. So, uh, yeah, what did you think of my accent just then? Pretty good? Very good, yes. Thank you, rather. thank you. I'm able to maintain a very consistent accent. Now look. No, uh, but... Porky. Will you take me with you? I'll take you with me, but I you... I appreciate it. Now, Porky, I'll take you to see these children. These sort of... Sort monsters. Sort of, yes. But I need a promise from you that you'll look after your belongings. Of course. I'll never underappreciate anything again, my friend. Including me? Because rather like your pocket, I've been feeling rather unappreciated as your friend. I'm sorry. Let's just get this... Stuff sorted. Right, good on you. We'll talk about it later. Old I mean, chap. don't want to gel, dwell on it too good. long. Right. Sif up a lip and all Excellent. that. Excellent, right, yes, march on. Oh, well, check it out, Rodney. I made myself fire. <sighs> That's really beautiful. I'm loving living in this house. Haven't we made an incredible little community here? Well, let's ask the other five of us and see what they say, shall we? All right. Oh, yeah, it's been so great. Loving it here. I'm loving it too, there, Tiny. It's a wonderful place. I love having a bed. I love it here. Ugh, I be loving it here. 
So I think the general consensus is that it's been a really good move for us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Everyone agrees. I feel like... What a fine bunch. I've really found myself in here. I've really found where I belong. I appreciate my family, my friends, you know. I'm really happy. You said it, Rodney. I appreciate the four walls and the roof above me. I appreciate this little hoodlum sooty family. I love my time here and I think it's really great. I'm so happy that we moved here on the date that was yesterday. <laughs> it's the best of day. It the best yesterday. of all the days that I have ever paid. I love this house, I love the warmth, I love the feeling of you. I love the community too. Sha la 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 lu 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 lu. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. Sha la la. Sha la 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 lu. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Sha la 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 la. I appreciate that every morning I've got something tasty to eat. I appreciate when day is dawning, I know I'm gonna have me some treats. And I appreciate that everything I do is now my fate, and that all of us have got a really good place to live. Who is this ball of soot next to you? How dare you bring mess into this house? It, it's me, Edgar. But I'm I know, I just said it's you, Edgar. Don't you recognize me, George the Doorman? Well, if Rose didn't recognize me, I'd give her what for. And I tell you what, sometimes she says to give her what for, even when she hasn't done anything. Right, as... Um, George, it's me. Don't you recognize your old master? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Sometimes people do role play and all that sort of thing, and it's hard to know even who yourself is. I don't want to know anything about that old man. Let us in. How dare you be a loyal doorman to these new owners? You should have come with me. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I was so worn out over... Yes, yes, I understand. Your nuptials. It's fine. Here we are, Edgar. Right. George, who is it? Bring him into the drawing room. We'll make our own way, thank you, George. Right you are, sir. What are we going to do, Edgar? I mean, this is your forte. Well, well, first thing we're going to do is I've got to assume my old persona. Oh, do it now. (sighs) Oh, my God, such a visual transformation. Like Beauty and the Beast, but backwards. Right in, right in, here I am. Back in the day when people used to call me Fast Eddie. Oh, yes, you're a sight to behold. Right, in we go then. Right then, you must be Rodney. Rodney I am, who must you be? I'm Fast Eddie. The Fast Eddie? That's right. Oh, boys, boys, come on, we've got... We've got pickpocket royalty in our presence here. Oh, my God, is it Fast Eddie? Fast Eddie. Wait, who's this? Fast Eddie? The one no. and only. Oh, but to be sure, it is him indeed. It's Fast oh, Eddie. I love Fast Eddie. Ach, that be Fast Eddie it is. Prove you're Fast Eddie. Hang on, let me throw you something. Whoa, that was fast. And I'll pick all your pockets in three seconds. Are you ready? It's already well, done. Well, he's him. already done it. I'm not even wearing any pockets and he picked them. I sewed my pockets up. 
and he picked him. Well, you didn't use zips, did you? That's what all the rage these days. Now listen, I've come here for Steady to come to an agreement of sorts with you lot. Look, anything for you, Fast Eddie. This is my dear friend, Porky. Hello. You probably don't recognise me because I'm covered in soot, but it is I, the old master of this house. Oh, wow, yeah, you do look really different with the suit on. And you look exactly like yourself, Rodney, and and Janice, I recognise that you are indeed a girl, and I am sorry about that. Thanks. Not that you're a girl, that I didn't recognise you earlier. That's all right, I've had two showers today. It's magical. Magnificent. Please, I wish to return to my home. I... The transactions here on the, the soot-laden streets of London have quite a price. Everybody's got to give someone and everything... Wait, hang on. No, no, I know exactly what you mean. Everyone has to give something and everyone has to take something. Absolutely. Now, here's what I'm thinking. You kids, you get to keep the house. What? You traitor! Hang on now, Porky, just you wait. I'm getting prickly! But you'll stay here in the house and you'll gain something too. What? I have to share? Friendship. With these disgusting clean kids? (laughs) That's right. You want me to befriend these children? Well... But I've got enough friends, I've got this gold watch. Yeah. Well, what's gonna happen if we say no? That's a great question. Yes. Fast, Eddie. What's gonna happen if we say no? I'll pick your lives away. What? I thought, I you thought could only... that was an urban legend. Surely you can't pick a man's heart right out of his chest like they say. Oh, yep. sh- right out of his chest like it's a pair of pants and the heart's in the pocket. What about a uh, a child, a, a girl's chest? Could you pick that? Absolutely. That's why I'm so successful with the ladies. Oh, you pick their hearts right out of their chest? <laughs> yeah. You're a real lady killer. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh. What do you think, Rodney? Well, I mean... Could we share? I don't know, like, um... What do you like to do in, like, your spare time? What do I like to do? Well, I... I like to play a little bit of pool by the pool. I like that. I like to play a little bit of chess by the chest. I like to play a little bit of bridge by the bridge. Playing the games in places, (laughs) that's the best. Do you like to sleep on things that aren't actually dustbins? Oh, yeah. Do you like to shower in things that aren't actually puddles? Oh, yeah. Do you like to have some friends that treat you like your family? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe this will work. You gotta give to get, and you gotta get and then give. You gotta give to get, and then you truly live. You You gotta gotta give give to get, get. you gotta get get to to give. You gotta give to get, and then you'll truly live. All this time I was getting and not giving. I tell you what, Edgar, can this poor fool be forgiven? You were the guy that I always would defend. But man, I never saw you as my goldest watchiest friend. It's been years, and yeah, your friendship turning up now is a bit belated. Oh. I've been waiting all these years, Porky just feeling quite under a pre she ate it. You gotta give to get, you gotta get to give, you gotta give to get, and then you truly live. You gotta give to get, you gotta get to give, you gotta give to get, and then you truly live. In this drawing room, we've caused quite the ruckus. the score but i tell you what this family it's got room for just one more i'd like to be quite honest i'm no longer gonna hit you i tell you what you're welcome here will you live with us hey girl? you gotta give to get you gotta get to give you gotta give to get i'm glad you truly live you gotta give to get you gotta get to give you gotta give to get i'm glad you truly That was 
underappreciated pocket. Uh, thank you so much to Christopher McWhorter Whitlock for the suggestion. Thanks to our patrons for supporting the podcast. Guys, what do you think? What do I think? I think that um, I can't believe how many extra actors we were able to get into the scene <laughs> with all those different characters. That we just got some really different actors with very distinct accents. Very yeah. distinct. Yeah. The yeah. Studio it's just like for the United thing. Nations in here all, for a second. All those patron donations have really helped us to get multiple. More. We put them in a holding box. It's when a you say the United Nations, all I could think of was One Nation, and I was like, <laughs> Alexia, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like the scootish one. That was my favourite. Um, well, we are Impromptu, the completely improvised musical podcast. If you want to suggest a title and have it turned into a podcast musical, jump on to the socials at Impromptu on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And make sure your pocket isn't underappreciated. Pick it up now and give it a big old five-star rating. It would love that because people <laughs> keep their phones in their pocket. So give both your pocket and the phone a five-star yeah. rating. Yeah, give, give Apple a five-star review for their iPhone. It's a great product. And always remember one more thing. Yeah, yeah.